yourself with the perfect prepper self-defense walking stick, also known as a martial arts Joe. This is 54 inches, made out of hickory. This is designed for self-defense. Now, this is one level of self-defense. This is something you can carry with you when you go on a hike, you go for a woods, or go in the woods, you're foraging, you're going out to prepare your supplies, whatever it is. You're just trying to get outside, get some fresh air, and calm your mind while the world is entering a period of craziness and chaos. So you take with you just a little extra self-protection in a basic hiking stick or a walking stick. This Martial Arts Joe, 54 inches, it's about an inch in diameter. It's made out of hickory. Hickory. It hits extremely hard. It has a lot of power. It's able to crush and break bones for self-defense if you use it in the right way, even if you don't have a lot of physical strength because you're going to be able to use your body to strike with, not just the weight of the staff, not just the power in your arms, but learning how to turn the shoulders and hips and generate maximum force for self-defense. Now, I want you to start with a proper warm-up. Always warm up using the Perfect Prepper Self-Defense tool, the self-defense walking stick, by turning it from side to side. And the purpose of this is get the blood into the joint, start to loosen everything up. You want to stretch out and increase strength at the same time. This is a good way to do it. W9UFO, good afternoon. It's good to see you. I have not been able to go live or make a video for a while because next door they're putting in a new fancy floor and they've been grinding <laughs> the ground. I don't know what they're doing over there, but it's so loud in here and it sounds like a dentist just drilling in your teeth. So uh, the first time it's a little bit quieter today. Good evening, Phil. It's good to see you. Phil's in England. Put it in the other hand and you're just going to turn it back and forth. Now, however heavy your staff is will determine how fast you do this motion. If it's light, you can go faster so that you can get more rotation. If it's heavier, go a little slower at first. If you're using hickory like this one, and I put the link in the description below if you want to buy one or if you just want to see what the dimensions are, it's in the description. Click on that first link, see what a self-defense walking stick is made of, and then go make your own. I always say invest your time before you invest your money. All right, now that's a good warm-up with just turning the wrists. Now, I want you to put it in one hand and you're going to hold it close to the top, standing away from the attacker, the threat. I'm... The, say you're in the, the preparation business, right? You are in a mindset of being prepared so you don't have to panic. Or you're in the mindset of being your own self-defender, your own first responder, your own bodyguard, and you want something in addition to your hands and your feet with, with, to, to defend yourself. You put it in your hand, you point your thumb at the threat, and then you're simply going to thrust. Good afternoon, Patrick. It's good to see you. In my, uh, it's in my right hand first. I'm going to step with that right foot as I come in. And the reason that I want you to step is to increase the power of the strike. Anytime you move your body weight with this stick in front of it, you're going to be able to hit a lot harder. You're simply pointing your thumb toward the threat and extending that arm all the way through. There's also going to be a turn in your shoulders and hips. You're gonna step in and you're going to strike. And I want you to do this as part of your warm up after the turn. Do it first in the air, and then if you have something to strike, you can strike a bag or maybe a stack of tires is always really good, or hang a ball from the ceiling or from a tree branch, like a tennis ball, and practice striking that for accuracy. Just make sure that you have full extension in the arm, you have that turn of the shoulders and the hips for maximum power, and you're stepping. Also, your goal is to get that straight into the center line between you and that target, that threat, you wanna go right into his nose, his teeth, his throat, into the solar plexus, even down between the belly button and the privates, that thin sheath of, me of uh, muscle keeps his guts in. You can stick somebody on the ground coming straight in. And you have that variety of heights. If maybe if the focus is here, he's screaming, he's yelling, he's getting ready to hit you and you just go low, he's not expecting a lower strike, that might be a good option. If he's starting to close the distance and you have to respond quickly, sticking that through his nose, that hard piece of wood, nose, teeth, throat, will stop his ability to come forward. He's not going to walk through that, that hitting him here. Now, if you hit it here in the shoulder and the arm, it won't do as much damage. But your goal is to use that hard tip against his soft flesh or teeth or throat, cartilage in there that will collapse and he's going to asphyxiate and die. He won't be able to breathe for self-defense. So this is the first motion. 
stepping with one hand, and I want you to do that at least for 30 seconds. Put in the other hand, and then the same thing. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, the other hand is up, stomach up and in, drop your chin, breathe through your nose, exhale, on the strike for self-defense. You'll get more power as you do that hard blowing motion that squeezes everything here and increases, accelerates the power and the speed of that strike. World Radio 234 Texas says, why does it have to be a he and not a she? Excellent point. It can be, it can be he or she or they, them, she, whatever, whatever, whatever their pronouns are. You let them choose their pronouns as they're coming in to hit you. You don't even have to ask what their pronouns are. Stick it right through its face. And if they're a thug trying to uh, hit you, hurt you, take away your life, your freedom, your liberty. Hello, uh, Sensei Emmett. We were talking about pronouns, and it doesn't always have to be a he who's attacking you. It can be a she, or it can be any other pronoun they choose to use. You're just gonna stick this right through its face to stop them from hurting you. Now that's that first strike. I want you to do that 30 seconds as part of the warm up, and as you do that, really extend. <laughs> Hank, that's funny. Extend that arm all the way through, locking this out turning your shoulders and hips and moving your body into it so that the weight of your body is being concentrated for all that forces is funneled, focused, concentrated into that tip. However much I weigh today, I didn't weigh myself this morning. However much I weigh today, that's going in through his face right behind this hard piece of hickory. Now, after you do that, I want you to go back to a spin. This is, this is a, a format I like to use to teach people how to get there faster. I want you to learn how to defend yourself using the Perfect Prepper Self-Defense Homemade or store-bought, wherever you get it, self-defense walking stick by doing strike, spin, strike, spin, strike, spin, or spin, strike, going back and forth, back and forth. But when you use the walking stick for self-defense, you will not, I'm not going to teach you how to do any frivolous or... Uh, superfluous, not important, non-practical spins. I want you to I want you to only use a spin with your martial arts Joe or your walking stick for self-defense that has a purpose. Um, <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Matthew. Since Amos says he might need a walking stick by Sunday, I'm assuming maybe your kumite is coming up. Um, yeah, Hank says good to see you smile. When, when, when things are going crazy in the world, right, which they are, we've entered a cycle. It's cyclical. Go back in history. Times have been worse than this. Way worse, right? Whatever the worst is for you right now. Um, it's been worse. And it gets better. It gets better. And the only thing you can control, the only thing I can control, the only thing you have power over is how you act, think, and speak. That's it. The way things are happening around us, you, this is your superpower in life, by the way. This is why I tell children. When someone says to a child, what do you want to be when you grow up, little uh, Sensei Emmett? And Sensei Emmett says, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a karate teacher. No, that's not important. What you say instead, you say, Sensei Emmett, when you get older, how do you want to be? You want to be more loving, more kind, more compassionate, more brave, more uh, faithful, more hardworking, more disciplined? Because you can work on all that stuff right now. And you have control over that. Who knows what your job is going to be? Who cares? It doesn't really matter. You're not going to find any happiness in your job anyway. You're going to find it when you see in the mirror that you become how you are, how you wanted to be as a person. When, you're, when you work on being kinder, nicer, more compassionate, stronger, braver, more, more able to speak up for yourself. And those are the things you have to work on every single day from the time you're a little kid until you die, right? Until you're dead. All right. They're starting to drill next door, so you might hear some sounds like this is buzzing, bees. It's not bees. They're working on the floor. All right, so the second thing I want you to do, get in a good position. That means one foot behind the other, one foot in front of the other, whichever hand the staff is in. This is my right hand. I put my right foot in front of my left. And from here, I'm going to turn my hand out and over. So it's almost like I'm going to punch you and drop my thumb. Punch and drop your thumb over, down. That's going to bring the back side of the staff up next to or alongside his head, right? Remember that old Billy Jack TV show, movie, 
whatever it was. And he said, I'm going to put my right foot on the left side of your face. There's nothing you can do about it. And then he did in the movie, right, or the TV show. It's the same thing. I'm going to put the long side of my staff up against the left side of your face, and there's nothing, and then you just do it, right? And you do that by pushing and turning. Now I want you to practice that spin over and over, because then when you bring it back, this is also an attack, right? I can, I can strike here and watch what I'm doing with my hips. I know you saw that. I'm turning my hips and I'm turning my hips. I push my hand, I turn my hips and my shoulders. I'm leaning in on each strike, forward, forward. Coming forward and back, forward and back, so that I have maximum striking power, maximum. I want you to get maximum striking power. You're going to do this in the air for 30 seconds. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Always keep your other hand up. Throw it into the other hand. Switch feet. Start slowly. And as you come through, you're going to feel it wants you to open your hand. Don't do it. Don't open your hand. Keep your hand closed and fight for that extra bit of flexibility with your hand closed so that you have more control over the staff. And this is, this is not just a superfluous spin. It's not a wasted spin. The purpose of this spin is to practice that hard, fast, comes out of nowhere, right across the side of his face. Or from this, this side, maybe he's reaching out, trying to hit you, stab you, grab you, smashing that hand out of the way, then hit him in the face. But practice that side to side, back to front, back to front. Now, back to the simple strike. I'm going to put it in the right hand and step back with my right foot. Before, I pointed the thumb and I stuck it through his face for self-defense. Now I'm going to lift it up, put my helmet on to guard my head, my face, my neck, all my tender vital spots here, and all of them here as I lift this up. This is really a blocking motion. If he's coming through here, this is lifting his hand up and out of the way, kind of like that roof high block that you see in so many traditional martial arts. From here, I'm lifting it up. Here. Quick interruption there. Then from here, I'm going to stick it through his face for self-defense. So I lift, thrust, lift, thrust, lift, thrust. One, two. Practice in the, in the air. One, two, one, two. You're going to do it over and over and over. Yeah, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, build it slow and make it last. I love that, Sensei Emmett. That's a good phrase. I'll remember that. Bring it up, thrust. Bring it up, thrust. Now notice that you can see in the mirror behind me, as I thrust, I'm stepping and I'm bringing my body weight forward. Remember I said you're going to do that because that generates more power in your strike. If you want, step off the angle. The th uh, th their attack is coming here. You're going to move to the side. That way, even if you're too slow, you're out of the way, you're not gonna get hit. If you're not lifting this fast enough, stepping to the side is gonna make it more effective. So you lift it up here, and then if I lift it up here, I can still thrust and go right through his face. He's just not gonna see it, but I'm gonna see him. I'm gonna be squared up on him. He's not gonna see me. I'm in his periphery. I'm seeing him with both eyes, straight through, right in the temple. Lights out, knock him out. Uh, since Amos said he learned that from an eight-year-old student. Yeah, they teach us a lot. From here, I bring it up, thrust. Bring it up, thrust. Throw it into the other hand. Same thing. Challenge yourself to be ambidextrous when you learn how to use the perfect prepper self-defense walking tool for self-defense. Not sure, not sure what I just said there. But this is the perfect self-defense prep. Oh, for when stuff hits the fan, right? If you were in a certain part of the world right now, you'd say, that stuff is hitting the fan. And, and I'm not saying you're gonna pick this up when the Spetsnaz comes floating down with the thing, but on the Red Dawn, right? You guys remember Red Dawn? The, I haven't seen the second, the remake, but the, the original Red Dawn, that was my movie growing up. From here, from here, thrust. But you might grab it when you throw your pack on your get out bag, your bug out bag, and you throw the other stuff in there, and you take this with you, because you, you never know, right? You should have as many options as possible. This is your gray man option, gray woman option. That means you blend in better. It's just a walking stick and then you stick it through his throat for self-defense. All right, so we had our warm-up spin. 
And we had this spin going side to side. Now I'm gonna show you one more, and it's more of a combination with, a, it's kind of a spin, but it's more of a turn. Robert says, nice, thank you, Robert. From, from here, I'm going to lift it, point the thumb again, but this time I'm doing it to put it here. Phil says he saw the original film. Wolverines, right? We'll have to say golden tigers, tigers, wolverines. We'll be tigers and wolverines. You can't get enough of that kind of stuff. Good afternoon, Justin, it's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, Hank, yes. You know what they probably needed more of, Hank, were some of those German helmets. They only got 5,000 German helmets. Maybe that wasn't enough, right? Um, good, Justin says he's grabbing his Joe. Let's go. Grab your Joe and let's go. I'm gonna point my thumb, it pops into the back hand, and from here, when I do this, I'm going to retreat a little bit. Let's say the attack is coming so fast, you need to um, get out of the way, right? Hank, I'm assuming you're talking about <laughs> the wrong side capitulating. <laughs> and I, I, I'm assume, I, I'll bet you're right. From here, you're coming here. Yeah, it's not gonna be what they're saying it is. That's because they keep lying to us. How could we believe anything they're saying? But back to the facts, back to what we're working on. All right, so from here, I'm gonna pull it in. I'm gonna lift it up. And I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna change my hand position. So I come back here, I'm gonna stick it through his throat. And I'm gonna pull it up. And I'm gonna change my hand position. I had to, I had to clear my brain for a second. I, watching too much of the news, like maybe some of you guys have. Uh, September Grady, hi, it's good to see you. Which is why we do, we do this kind of stuff, right? This is, it's not just physical self-defense, it's emotional self-defense, it's spiritual self-defense, it's intellectual self-defense against craziness, the stress of the day. When you move your body and you start to break, break a sweat and you breathe heavy, you're clearing your mind, you're doing something for yourself to get healthier, right? Even if you never pick this up, in anger, to defend yourself. Shouldn't be in anger anyway, right? Or you never have to stop somebody who's angry with you. Maybe if that never happens, just the daily practice of the spins and the turns and practicing the strikes and the hand changes and learning how to do some cool things, maybe that clears your mind and keeps you sane and keeps you healthy and keeps you mentally happy or mentally healthy and happy. Yeah, and Justin says, martial arts was keeping me sane with all this insanity. That's why I do it too. I thought, Justin and everybody else, I thought about doing something else. I've looked for something else hard for three years. And every time I find something else, I weigh the two things. First question is, I'm going to have to start over no matter what I do, right? Because I'm in a new place, whatever, whatever. Um, second question, do I get to move my body or do I have to sit in a chair or in a car all day long? Can't do that, won't do that, not for my mental health. That's, that's, that, mental, physically, that's gonna break me down. And then three, the sense of purpose, right? Being able to move your body is extremely important instead of sitting all day, which kills you. And then the sense of purpose, the sense of uh, doing something that's bigger than you, that's important, that's hard, that challenges you. Yeah, and, and Matthew says, is a healthy distraction, right? You could be outside drinking and smoking cigarettes. <laughs> like a lot of people do that. Oh, uh, so they're great. The shirt is cool. Thank you. I just got a whole bunch of these in stock. They're only 15 bucks plus uh, shipping wherever you are. If you want one, just send me a message. I can send you the Venmo and I ship one out. Or you can hit the link. There's a link below on the video somewhere. They're a little bit more if you do the one below because they print those or whatever. But I have a bunch of these in stock, all sizes. All right, so from here, I bring it into the hand. As I do that, I pull back a little bit. I'm going to thrust and I'm going to lift and then I'm going to change my hand position. So from here, you're going to put it in the back hand, thrust, when you do that thrust, you're gonna slide it through your front hand a little bit, and both hands turn over. So from here, this is one. Practice this, one. From here, one. Notice that I'm doing a little move away, and then in. One, and then in. One, and then in. After you do this, you're going to only focus on your back hand. That, that'll help you get there faster. If not, you're going to be thinking about this with your front hand. This is a blocking motion, but that's a different one. You're going to think backhand, backhand, backhand. Put your helmet on, put up here. Get one of those German helmets. The Germans, such great, such great friends to the Ukrainians. Send them 5,000 helmets. 
That's all right. Obama sent him a bunch of blankets last time in MREs. So which, which would you rather have? The, the warmth of a blanket and something to eat or a helmet to stop the shrapnel? Uh, it's, either way, it's kind of ridiculous. From here, one, two. I'd say if you're going to do that, let's quit pretending and just stay out of it. From here, one, two. When you do this one, again, just think of this backhand. Get this up here. Bring this up here. Bring this up, but it's a good distraction from what is really happening, right? One, two. Then they don't have to take responsibility for what they've done and <laughs> to the economy and to the world. Bringing it forward. From here, bringing it forward. My back hand slides forward, turns. The front hand comes to the back hand and strikes. From here, one, two, Three. The other thing that you're going to do is when you come forward with your strike, your left, your front hand slides back, your front hand goes past it, takes it, this hand slides down. This leg is stepping forward to come forward for power on that strike. So from here, one, two, lift, strike, get in the ready position. Now on the other side, because I want you to be ambidextrous. One, two, three, four. Put it down, slide back, thrust to the throat. Put your helmet on, change hand position, step forward with the hand that's coming forward. Put that hand down, retreat a little bit, thrust, step off of the angle when you're ready. Strike, reset, squared on to the threat. One, two, to the side, strike. One, two, three, strike. One, two, three, strike. And slow, smooth, smooth, and fast applies here more than anywhere else. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. You don't have to put it on the floor every time. Once you get it, just practice. And then if you want, you can start. One, two, three, four. One, two. Two, three, four. Just turning in a circle one way, turning in a circle the other way. Thank you, Studer, for that donation. Thank you so much. That helped. Um, the one you gave me the other day was really awesome. This one is really awesome. It adds up. And it. February has been such a weird month. I keep getting cancellations. I'm supposed to be working with a client right now. This is six times out of six sessions. She's canceled. She's been here twice. And those two, she hasn't done much. And so I'm done, right? I can't get, and when they don't come, they don't pay. So I appreciate that. I'm really grateful. I'm not telling you that out of pity. I'm just saying that I appreciate when they don't come because that gives us time to train together. But man, that's annoying. I've never had, when I had like 350 members and if I had 20 people cancel in a month, it's no big deal. But when you only have 20 members and you have, you know, do the math, it's a big deal. Anyway, uh, Jeremy, good afternoon, it's good to see you. Anyway, Studer, my point is, thank you very much. It's very meaningful, very helpful. From here, one, two, three, back. One, two, three, slow, the first motion. And I know I'm going over the same thing over and over again. And I know that it's helpful for you when I do that. So I wanna do it for just a little bit longer. From here, push lift, the back hand starts to slide forward and turn, the front hand goes to where the back hand was, taking that position, and you step forward with that, that's my right hand with the right foot. Then I repeat that pattern on the other side, pull, thrust, remember to turn those hands, sliding through your hand a little bit, get some distance, thrust, lift, put the helmet on, and again, to get this up in the right position, because when I teach you this in person, I see this a lot, which is just a different move, and I want this, which is focus on the back hand. Think about traditional karate, taekwondo, tangsudo, high block, right? It's the same thing, it's this, this high block, proper high block. So from here, one, two, three, four, back, in, up, back, and then, Start to step off the angle, 
and then retreat or return to the middle. One step off the angle to the other side, and then when you're really ready, start to change positions, turning, and the way you get around the circle is that you look on the strike, and then before you know it, you're back to the way you came, then you start to go back the other direction, and then just play around with it, mess around with it until you're twisting and turning and fighting in a more realistic way so that you can learn how to use the most perfect, uh, self perfect prepper self-defense tool for when stuff hits the fan, the self-defense walking stick, or whatever I said in the title. <laughs> that's, that's a tip. If you ever have a YouTube channel and you're trying to grow it, whatever the title says, which you should research and make sure it's the right title, you have to say it over and over and over again to trigger the algorithm. Now, I said that, but I'm gonna say this as a disclaimer. I don't think I'm triggering any algorithms lately. So, it, but it does help, it does help. You'll see a, a difference when you do that. What I'm saying is, t t take my uh, advice with a grain of salt. Just like everything else he said, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not always right, I'm often wrong, but I'm never in doubt. And so when you're not in doubt, you can proceed boldly. One of my favorite quotes, Samuel Mockby, I think that was his name, famous architect, engineer maybe. Proceed and be bold, proceed and be bold. I love that idea. If you're gonna go for it, go for it. Don't go timidly, Make, pick a direction and go. And then if you're going in the wrong direction, <laughs> laugh at yourself and pick another direction and go. But don't change directions too fast. Give yourself a little bit of time, see if you're right or wrong. Awkward the cat, good to see you. But do something about it, right? Oh, French Bob, I thought you were talking about one of my favorite movies, Papillon, Papillon, the French movie on the, the, uh, the island, the prisoner island. All right, all the politics, we can talk politics all day these days, right? It's too much. All right, so we started with the turn. Oh, I know what I wanted you to do. Yeah, immediate direct explosive, Justin says. Yeah, get right in there and get it done. I want you to get power in the forearms. So I'm gonna finish with one of my favorite turns. Now th this is a version of this, right? You have to be able to change your hands without taking your hands off the staff. So your hands are always on the staff, making contact. You wanna be able to fight, but your hands might have to be in opposite directions. You might have to change. When you do that, you wanna practice this motion first. Take just one hand. The other hand just holds nice and firm, build that power. One, two, one. See how my, my thumb becomes almost a pivot point? I'm really pivoting though. I'm rolling the palm. This is a palm roll. I'm rolling the palm and then I do the other one. Two, one, two, two, one, two. And then, two, oh, I finally got the sign up. I know I, I, I talked about um, in the beginning of the week, I did a members only update and I showed you some of the things that we had done taking out most of the front wall, there's still a little bit left to go. But I had a sign that said rock steady boxing and people would show up and they couldn't find it. And we just got, um, yeah, asked if, you're, if I'm selling this stick, go to the first link below, you can find this particular self-defense walking stick. It, it'll last you forever. It's made out of hickory, it hits really hard. Anyway, I got the sign up this week. I finally got the permits, everything's done. Things are coming together. Got a bunch of new members, not a bunch, three new members a week, which is a bunch for me. Three new members this week. I think that's a studer, that was your positive energy. You got it going, got the ball rolling, and then it just snowballed from there. Got new people coming in, try it next week. And even though I've had a lot of weird cancellations, I think it's just because people are stressed and worried. And it's not gonna last forever. Remember, you only control how you think, speak, and act. So whatever is happening, let it happen. Now, after you've done this, but just protect your mind, right? Now, I want you to roll over the back of your hand and stop it, and then roll over the back of the hand and stop it. This is a wrist roll, and by stopping it and pushing it back the other way, you increase the speed of that spin. So you're gonna build power in your forearms and your wrists but then you're going to take it one step further because this is, I want it to be practical. I don't want you to have any superfluous, wasted 
showy spins, they have to have a purpose for self-defense. You have to be able to use these in your uh, perfect prep for self-defense walking stick. And so you're going to stay in contact either with the staff or your other hand and just make practice this way. Sliding through from one hand to the other hand and try to get into that habit of always in contact with either your staff or the other hand. One, two, one, and then settle in. Bend the knees a little bit and push yourself. See how many you can do without your dropping it. You drop it, pick it up, then see how many you can do without stopping. And then increase your intensity, your speed, just drop it. That's good because if I don't ever drop it, I'm never going to make any higher progress, right? So no matter how long I've been doing it, which is a long time, decades, I've been spinning for decades. If I don't drop this staff, I'm never getting any better. And you're never going to get any better either. So push yourself, go faster, try to maintain that rule of contact. And this one I can tell you for a fact, it frightens me a little bit when it comes flying out of my hand because I know if it bounces on that floor and it catches me every once in a while, it's going to hurt, which is good. I want it to hurt because I want it to wake me up. I want it to keep me awake. I want it to let me know that I'm getting out of the comfort zone and I'm pushing myself. And I don't want to be the same. That one almost did get, come back because then when it hits something, it comes this way. I don't want to be the same this year that I was last year. I don't want to be the same today that I was yesterday. I know that things have to change and you have to age, but that doesn't mean that you have to get slower. That doesn't mean you have to get um, more inflexible. You can be more flexible. You can be, even if it's just in your thinking or your, your knowledge, or maybe it's picking up a word or two in another language, but whatever it is, get out of your comfort zone, push yourself, there's no growth inside the cover zone. Faster, faster, until you can't go any faster. And then maybe you've reached that point of diminishing returns. And you say, oh, that's good. I made it. I know for a fact, because I can feel it in my hands already, I'm going to be sore later. I hope you're sore later. And then there you go. Now it's time to work on something else. But keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself and pushing yourself to grow and get out of your comfort zone in order to grow. And remember, you only can control how you think, speak, and act. You can't control what happens to you. You can't control the craziness in the world politics. You can't control what uh, and the media is just going to beat you to death with all of these negative images to try to get into your brain and get into your wallet. And they love it. They don't even know they're just like a sickness. They're like a bunch of drug addicts. And we're, but we're the junkie or they're the, I don't know, you know what I mean, some metaphor, some metaphor in there somewhere. The point is, don't let them win. This is self-defense against some nasty dude getting in your face or girl getting in your face or it getting in your face, smash them. But it's also a way to get your heart rate up, breathe, calm your mind and train and turn off the news and stop looking at all that other garbage. Don't let, watch what you let get into your brain. All right, so that's what I've got for you. I always like you to finish with finger rolls, and this is not superfluous either. This is to build wicked strength in your hands, but also to protect your joint from um, tendonitis. You don't want to get the tendonitis. You don't want to get the carpal tunnel. You've got to extend your hands as much as you flex your hands. And this is extending and flexing at the same time, extending and flexing, going through your fingers, finger rolls for wrist health, hand help. This is what you have to do when you learn how to defend yourself with a self-defense staff. Wrist rolls, since the it. I'm going to show you the secret to the wrist roll. It's this. I don't know if that's a secret, but we're going to say that's a secret. I was doing this the other night and um, I've been doing this a lot lately, a lot of wrist rolls in the classes and we fixed one thing and this seems to be the secret. Don't let the wrist, uh, the elbow bend. What happens is when people start doing, they start, see what I'm doing? 
I'm Ben, and, and I can do it without dropping it because I've done it a million times. But if you isolate, if you uh, straighten that to isolate this, and then just let it balance there, and then turn the hand to catch it, and then bring it back the other way. When it gets around, open the hand, turn the hand and catch it. You're going to get a lot faster than if you let that elbow bend. If you bend the elbow, you start chasing it around. And when you chase it around, you actually, I exaggerated, you actually are pushing it away. And when you push it away, then you get frustrated because you can't get the spin. So on the wrist roll, isolate, don't let that bend. Keep everything focused right here. So I'm here and I'm here. On the fingers, use your other hand and walk it through. Because what happens is most people get this. They're going, they put two fingers together, but you want to Walk it with this hand. And the reason you're using this hand is because when you first start, and Hickory's a heavy staff, but my, I've been doing this for 30 plus years easily, 40 years, over 40 years. Doing this, uh, Sam says, thanks for sharing this time with us. Sam, it's my pleasure. When I started doing this stuff online, hi Black Panther, um, I, was, I was burned out with working with the students who would come in here. And they weren't all kids, kids and adults, but they have so much other stuff in this country and mostly Western countries. They have so many options to choose from. And it's like they're fat and gluttonous on leisure and learning and whatever, right? They can go to soccer, baseball, any sports, you name it, music, you name it. They can take a class in anything and they're, you know, there's so much money, everybody's got money. They're going to pay for this, pay for that. They don't repeat, not, not all of them. Some of them are really eager still. But most of them, they don't appreciate it at the level that I did as a poor kid riding my bike to the 13 miles and cleaning and cleaning people's nasty uh, uniforms and, and cleaning the floor and all the stuff that I did to trade for classes. That's how I got started on the YouTube. I was at a point where I'm like, I'm done. I'm just going to put it all online, and then that's going to be my legacy. I'm going to go do something else. And then I met you, and I realized that you're still there. The eagerness, the excitement, the love of martial arts, the love of learning something new, trying hard, dropping it, hitting yourself in the head over and over, not being frivolous, not giving up, not quitting, not walking away from a challenge. That still exists, but you're, we're, we're just spread out. And we find each other through YouTube and Facebook and social media and we come together and we train in the virtual dojo and Studer, Studer makes these donations a lot of you are members that helps pay for things all of you who train with me I get a little bit of money pennies but it adds up from people watching the videos and that's but it's the comments it's the emails in the comments that I get in the, the way it changes some people's lives and how eager they are and how hungry how hungry you are to learn and it reignited my passion. That's why I like to spend more time with you than I do in person most of the time. And that's the truth. Because you guys are more hungry than all the people who are able to show up in person or not show up because they have a headache or their knee hurts or their back hurts. No shit. Excuse my language. My back hurts, my knee hurts, my hip's killing me. I'm tired, I'm this, I'm that, I'm whiny. I'm still training, and I appreciate when you show up to train with me too, right? Sometimes I just want to say to somebody, I'm sorry, but I don't care. I don't care if your hip hurts, if your knee hurts, if you have a headache, if your, your kid, you know, it's the ones that, it's like the one who was supposed to be today, here today, oh, she's been sick for a week and then she's had too much homework. I'm like, lady, I don't give a shit, you know? She either trains or she doesn't. Someone was either going to smash her face in or they're not. And if someone goes to smash her face in and that's why you want her to come here and she doesn't ever show up because she had a little boo-boo, then you're, kill you're, you're defeating the purpose. And I, I don't say that lightly. I mean, I mean that with all of my heart. If you need...
to, 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 if, if you didn't get enough sleep last night because you're playing Fortnite and, and smoking vaping weed, which is the truth, which is what is likely happening with most of these young adults who don't show up. And the parents li likely know it, but they just pretend they don't. And then they make excuses for them. Life is going to beat the snot out of your kid. And I'm not trying to be mean. They're going to beat the snot out of your kid. And, and, and that kid should be mad at you, mom and dad and mom and dad, because it's, it's both, right? And that kid, when that kid wakes up 36 years old and they don't have a job and they're still living in your basement or in the, your, your guest room or, or you're still paying for their lifestyle and you're shaking your head and you're blaming them, look in the mirror. How many things did you let them quit? And I know that seems cliche, right? But I've been doing this for so long that I'm in the front line and I see it happen and it's worse than ever, man. I tell you what, the real, the real issue is not the red dawn coming down in the parachutes. The real issue is what we're doing to ourselves in the schools and with all these kids and the 12th place trophies and everybody's a winner. Which is why I like training with you because I know we're smacking ourselves with this, we're dropping it, we're picking it up, we keep going. All right, I've got to go teach somebody. I've got to hear them banging on the back door. You guys have been awesome. If again, thanks, Studer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, there won't be any sound. I haven't been able to make these lives because they've been having some work next door, but I'll be back. Yeah, Jeremy says, yeah, if you whack yourself in the head, it's not going to feel good.